So before we get to the main video, I'm going to do something that I don't usually do. Think of this as a preamble. I actually had to do two takes on the review of the Fine Audio F704s. That's unusual. I usually just do one take on the video. I've, I've put together all my thoughts, my listening notes. I spend a considerable amount of time with it. And I usually just speak completely off script. I speak from my heart. But the first video was kind of like a rambling mess. And the second video, I don't feel, which is the one you're going to see now, I'm, I'm not sure is much better. And here's why. Here's the difficulty I had with the fine audio. I love them. I absolutely love them. I was scared to buy them. They were a different design than what I'm used to. And I really took a leap of faith on them. And I could not, to say I could not be more pleased is an understatement. To say I absolutely love them and am blown away by them is the truth. So I'm not here to kind of play games and, and make you watch the entire video to see what I think about them. But the problem with loving a speaker so much is that I could go on for an hour about everything they did that just really impressed me and that really just made me so pleased that I bought them. Instead, I've tried to condense it and I've, I've touched on just a few topics in hopes that at least it's a, a more cohesive video. So here's the takeaway. If nothing else, holy crap, these fine audio F704s, which are designed, manufactured, produced, made, whatever language you want to use. These F704s are 100% from the United Kingdom, unlike other speakers that play word games as to where they're from or where they're manufactured or are they actually made in a different country and then just simply screwed into a cabinet in, in a European country to say made there. None of those games. And that means something to me. When, an, when a company has that integrity and honesty and pride that means something to me. So watch the video. I hope you enjoy it. Fine Audio, you've made this really difficult for me because honestly, I could have just come on and done a three second video and said, holy crap, these things are amazing. Go buy yourself a pair. You will absolutely love them. But alas, I needed a video longer than that. So watch and I hope you enjoy. So now that we cut to the chase in the beginning of the video, you know what I think of these speakers. I love them. So let's now uncover some of the other aspects in terms of their features and their sound. For those of you who've watched my almost 90 videos now, you know I love horn speakers. I've had a multitude of clip speakers. I had their Cornwalls. I had their La Scalas. Before that, I had a small pair of JBLs. I really like the JBLs. But I ended up going with Klipsch Part of the reason why, or most of the reason why, was because the JBLs, the bigger ones that I wanted, were just insanely expensive. And I just could not justify spending that kind of money. Love you, JBL, just too much money. So I ended up going with the Klipsch, liked the Klipsch very much, but I reached a point with the Lascalas, although they did some things nice, I could just never get them dialed in correctly. Uh, I had problems with them in my room having virtually zero base output below 75 hertz or so. On top of that, there was always a, a driver integration issue in their room. It just never worked in this room, even with the uh, sound treatments I have. And this room should have been ideal. It's almost 25 feet wide, almost 30 feet long. It opens up into a larger room. So this room likes big speakers. Now, the Klipsch did some things that I really, really liked. The La Scala is uh, compression-free. I love that compression-free sound of the horn. It sounded like it was just so tall and wide, and, and the, the sound stage. It was really like you were there in that regard. But I just couldn't get past a lot of that stuff. And here's the other problem. As my gear has increased from a Luxlimon integrated to now we're running, uh, currently we're running an Antipodes Audio K22 server streamer. We've got Aqua La Scala tube DAC. Yeah, it's the same word, La Scala, but completely different from Italy. We're running a VAC special edition tube integrated amp and 
the variety of stealth audio cables. Man, those cables really made a huge difference. I surpassed the capabilities of the speakers. And what became really evident is no matter what I did in terms of speaker placement, listening placement, sound absorption materials, there was a nasty resonance, chestiness to those speakers that on certain songs was exasperated to the point that to me made it unlistenable. That was much less of an issue when I started with them over a year ago and with, oh, I hate to say lower end gear, but as you got into a much higher performance of gear, that became much more noticeable of an issue. So that led me to a search for new speakers. Reached out to people I knew, started doing lots of research, and that brought me to Tanoi's because I needed something that could really pressurize the room. Now, I'm not gonna rehash the video I did on Tanoi. I will tell you that for a variety of reasons, I felt as though Tanoi was not a speaker I wanted to spend money on. I had too many questions about issues with Tanoi, quality with Tanoi, integrity with Tanoi. I could be completely wrong. Uh, I prefer a company that is more forthright and proud of where and how things are made rather than uh, maybe not being completely clear on that. But watch the other video for all that information. This is about fine audio and, and not Tanoi. So I wanted a speaker that could give me my giant sense of dynamics that I love, was absolutely very articulate and offer insight, but not analytical and not hi-fi sounding. I wanted something that was musical, that had great bass output, that could fill this large room, and frankly could pay, play loud at times with no compression. Yes, I love my opera, I love my jazz, uh, I, I love everything in between, but there are times where I really like to relive my rave days and I want to feel like I'm there at the rave. That all led me to the fine F704s. The speakers for probably the untrained eye or the person who doesn't really know what's going on, they're going to just assume they're like the other similar type speakers, whether it be Tanoi or Kef or anything like that. You guys are wrong. And I was wrong. So first, let's talk about the name. I originally thought Fine Audio, F-Y-N-E, was a play on Fine as an F-I-N-E. Actually, they are in Scotland next to a lock called Fine, F-Y-N-E. So like Loch Ness, Fine Lock. Although I do have a question. If any of the Fine Audio guys are watching this, will you message me down below and let me know if you have a monster in your lock like Loch Ness? Because that would be really cool. And if so, what's her name? But I digress. Now, from a technology point of view, and I'm not technical, but I'm gonna try and relay some of their technologies, I would say that if you Google and watch what they talk about at the actual shows on video, they explain it much better than I'll be able to do. But some of the technologies include, for instance, their ISO flare. The ISO flare is where they put the tweeter down the throat, and I'm, I'm looking at the F704s, it's the top driver, and they've pushed it down the throat so that the tweeter is in line with the uh, actual mid bass driver. This is going to allow timing to reach your ear in a precise manner that is time aligned that actually is noticeable more than I thought it would be. I did have some timing issues with the different drivers between the, the higher frequencies and the, the lower frequencies or lack of them with the, with the La Scala's. So that really made a big difference for me with the sound difference being I would say if you choose a song and have a high school band play it and then have like a really professional band play it, that's sort of the difference. You have the high school band where they're all kind of maybe a little off and the timing of playing the, the, the notes and what they're supposed to do. And it, it's not quite, on, not quite on point. And then you listen to the same song by the professional band and it's like, wow, they're just tight. They're, they're all right there. I think that's a good way of describing the difference as, as I hear. Obviously, you get other things such as smearing and things like that, but I think that's the easiest way to explain it. It's one of those things where even compression, for instance, 
my ears are really sensitive to compression in the drivers, especially at higher voices. I That sticks out to me like a sore thumb on, on voices. These speakers have no compression that I've been able to get out of them, even at really high volume listening levels. That's one of the reasons why I love horns is because typically you don't have compression in that way with horns that I've heard. So kudos to the F704s for that. They also have a completely new suspension surround, and that's gonna allow the driver to move in and out better, more controlled, more a controlled even frequency response, a flatter frequency response, which to my ear lends to a much more overall smoother sound that combined with the cohesiveness of the ISO flare driver just adds to a sense of more realism, more natural music-like, more like you are there, but in an organic musical sense versus just a, a loud in your face sense. And finally, the third technology I want to, to really hit on is their downward firing port that actually has a diffuser plate, which does several things. When you have a port in front or in back of the speaker, you're now gonna exasperate room boundaries and make room placement more difficult. By having the port fire down below, that minimizes that. But what happens if you have that speaker on a carpet versus a hardwood floor versus a tile floor? Each one of those is going to interact with the port differently. So what the guys at Fine did is not only do they have a diffuser that goes up into that port, which makes it go a full 360 degrees around to make it easier to place in the room. And these speakers were very easy to place in the room. They also have, if the, so if the port comes out here, they also have another plate below it. And what that does is that will always keep a consistent boundary that that port exits onto. So regardless of whether you put these speakers on a carpet, a tile floor, a hardwood floor, there's going to be a consistency that allows them to tune the speaker to its max capabilities and minimize any differences between the rooms. So they've clearly put a lot of thought and effort into this. The last thing I want to cover on is their efficiency. I like efficient speakers. That's another advantage of a horn speaker. It allows you to run with tube amps or low power amps and get a type of sound and organicness that I don't think is, is easy to get through a lot of solid state amps, a lot, especially when you get into these big, powerful brute amps. A lot of times you'll hear reviews where they say, oh, this amp has so much control over the sound. That to me is a negative. That to me means you're not getting the decay of the notes. You're not getting the start of the strings or the instruments because too much control to me is like a light switch. It's turning on and off and on and off and on and off, but that's not how I hear music. I hear music as there's an increase, there's a decrease, there's an increase, there's a decrease. Different rates and different speeds of that, but if it's too much control, it's too tight, you lose a lot of that organicness and that natural ebb and flow. I love ebb and flow of music. So to me, having a 96 dB efficiency speaker allows me to run it with my tube amps or other amps and just has a more natural effortless feel to it. And it also opens up the ability for you to run different gear with it. So when it comes to listening, what do I hear with these speakers? Well. It actually took me a while to deconstruct what I was hearing. At first, 
I heard all this increase in detail, but I hate that word detail. To me, and the Stealth Audio Cables made me realize this, detail in many instances is just a way of saying frequencies are artificially tilted up or it's too bright, all to give you more detail while skewing the tonal balance and making things sound, to me, more harsh, less natural. So I don't wanna say these speakers have a lot of detail. Instead, I thought about this for a while, I wanna use the word insight. These speakers have given me, uh, and, and to be fair, it also is relative to the amp that I'm running, the DAC, the streamer, the cables, the Wellfloat isolation platform. So they all come together and they all play together. But I've heard this over several levels a year, again, running from Luxman Integrateds up to the VAC amps. And these speakers, to their credit, never, they always improved and let me hear minute differences that I could not hear with the La Scalas. Now, guys, the La Scalas are, I think, fifteen or $16,000 speakers. We're not talking about cheap speakers here. There is a dramatic difference in the level of insight between the La Scalas and something like these fine audios. So the fine audios, I believe I have not reached their maximum potential yet, whereas with the La Scalas, and I'm not speaking ill of the La Scalas, I felt as though I had passed what I could get out of them and they became the significant limiting factor in the gear that I've been reviewing. So with that level of insight, I found myself listening to songs that I had never really enjoyed before. I was realizing that even on songs that I've heard a lot, there's so much more complexity, so much more going on, so much more in intricacies in the music and the instruments and, and the way that the, the vocalists are playing with their voice, for instance, like Holly Cole, she's got a song, So and So. And the stand-up bass guy, when he's going on and doing his solo, he's kind of humming and, and, and groaning and going along with it, where in the past you could almost make it out. Here, it was like, wow, it's it's right there. But it's not artificially lifted. There's not an artificial spotlight on it. It just sounded more natural and detailed. On the Jose Carrera song, Kiri, on the La Scalas, to me, it was, okay, you've got the singer and then you've got the, 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 the singers behind them. And I kind of would hear them move. I didn't know if they were shuffling or what they were doing. With this system, the new ones now with the fine and the other gear, I'm actually hearing the singers inhale, but not only inhale to then start to sing, which before I didn't know that's what they were doing. You can actually hear they're not all inhaling and, and, and getting their breath at the same time. And you can just hear all of that. And again, I'm going to say insight and not detail because it's just so natural and lifelike sounding. It's really uncanny in that regard. Uh, Neil Lara, I think it was uh, his song Bleeding. In the beginning, they've got, he strums his fingers along his electric guitar and it actually startled me the first time I listened. It was so lifelike and so vibrant. And I've never heard it like that before. But again, not artificially spotlighted. On the Holly Cole song, Every Day Will Be Like a Holiday, there is a point where he's he's got the sticks on, on his drum and he's just, he's just got it and he's hitting the metal rim on 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 the drum with this setup now i could actually hear as he moved the sticks that he wasn't always hitting it in the same place which was uncanny because before it was just well yeah it was kind of there you weren't really sure they snap in is it the sticks what is it it was so clear and so tonally rich and that's the other thing these speakers are so tonally rich whereas previous speakers yeah they may be able to be compression free but you realize, especially at the louder volume levels, all the vocals, they just, they sound flat and lifeless. Whereas with the fine audio, there's so much information, so much richness and texture. You can hear what they're doing with their voice. You can hear if maybe all of a sudden they got a little frog in their throat, whereas before you couldn't hear it. It is just absolutely an experience and an event. And, and that's the thing, the music is an event an emotional connection that I have not had, which leads me to listen to the songs I've never listened to before that I always had, saved as favorites, but just, yeah, I could never really connect with them that much, even though I wanted to. I'm listening to them now and enjoying them. I'm listening to so much more music because I'm enjoying the event 
rather than just the song. That's huge. With other horn speakers, you can experience a, a wide and tall soundstage. What I wasn't really realizing is how flat and one dimensional that was. So the La Scala speakers were very wide, very tall, but very flat. Almost think of it as you're at a concert and it's just a wall of sound of speakers. The fine audio, when I would play the same type of music, enveloped me in the music. So I felt like I was in the club. I felt like I was in the middle of the rave. I, I felt like there was depth to it that really just added so much more of an emotional connection to it. Guys, I can't say enough great things about these speakers. I could go on and on and on. And this is actually the second take I've done on these speakers. I usually take one take, I do it live, unscripted. But there's so much I want to say about these speakers and they've impacted me to su such a large degree. I didn't know how to consolidate this video and keep it somewhat on target. So fine, you guys have really stumped me on this and kudos to you for doing that. But I will say one thing. I think these speakers are beautiful. The finish on them is magnificent. They are a talking point. You could put these in a room. This is a mixed use room, so I need a wife acceptance factor. She, she thinks these speakers are beautiful. So fine audio, thank you. Thank you for letting me have a pair of speakers that have so moved the needle forward for me. And I hate that saying, it's such a common saying and this and that. I'm not gonna play that game of, oh, they're better than speakers costing twice the price. Or, I, I don't know. I, I, to me, price has no bearing on performance. There's gear I've heard that's less expensive that's phenomenal. There's gear that I've heard that's more expensive that's phenomenal. So I'm not gonna play that game. I am gonna play that game that these are in my system, in my room, of all the speakers I've heard, the finest sounding speakers I have yet heard. And if these speakers are that good, it makes me wonder how good is your F1 series, which is the next series up, or even something like the classic 15s. God, those things are beautiful. Imagine them in a giant room like this. So guys, if you really want an awesome speaker, and dare I say a speaker that I couldn't find anything that it didn't do well, and you just want a natural musical sound with loads of insight. In fact, I got a couple of words here that I wrote down. I'm looking down at my, my, my notebook here. I wanna make sure I get them right. These speakers have attitude, they've got scale, swagger, but they still have finesse, insight, and emotion. I don't know how better to sum it up. So thank you, Fine Audio. I love these things.